Hello everyone, this is RaySpace and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I'm here with the recoverable version of the Kasei-2 rocket, well, the recoverable version of the first stage of the Kasei-2 rocket, hence the tiles and the wings and all. And I'm trying to see what payload we can get to orbit with all of this added to the first stage and with it needing to glide forward in order to land in the Bahamas. Uh, I've had to make some changes to make sure that it gets to the velocity it needs to get to in order to get to the Bahamas. Uh, I think that we are still not good on the aerodynamics. I tried to use FAR in the SPH to work on the aerodynamics of the first stage with the fairings and everything, and FAR basically lied to me. Uh, as an example, the canards that we have here were actually way up here before. And, but it, it's been very clear that that's not where they need to be. But Far said they need to be up there. So, or at least the dialogue in the SPH did. So I'm a little bit puzzled by that, but I'm just going to do a capacity test. There have been other changes as well compared to the normal Kasei 2. Uh, the upper stage is under fueled because I needed to, the speed to be a certain speed so that this can get to the Bahamas. And if we had it fully fueled, we just don't have enough speed. So uh, it's under fueled. We have a 150 ton payload in the form of avgas in the fairing. And also the boosters that would normally go on the recoverable version of the Kasei 1 rocket, which are the Sajita boosters, are insufficient for the Kasei 2. Also, they were never fitted to be reusable. Uh, I have decided, therefore, to fit instead three neutron first stages. Now, there is no second stage inside. It still has the fairing because I didn't get rid of that. Uh, it's a larger fairing than they actually have on the, on the actual neutron rocket, but I haven't remodeled it based on their smaller fairing yet. Uh, but we have the fins and stuff and of course the nine Archimedes engines on each one creating much lag. So now we have lighting on the ground 36 engines in total and yeah that that gives us a little bit more boost. They're not huge, they're not that much bigger than the Sajita boosters but they're big enough. They're basically they're close to twice the mass of those boosters so uh, they're a little bit better. And I am using more volume in them than is normally used by the methane and oxygen for the neutron. And that's because we actually had more space, right? We don't have the second stage, so it's okay. All right, so I do have the script reserving fuel in the neutron stage, neutron stages for their landing on a barge or drone ship or whatever. So there is that. And let's just focus on getting the payload to orbit and making sure that part works first. And then I'll show you what happens with the first stage recovery, which I think I'm going to need to do way more testing on. But I have tweaked it. I have not tried launching this version. I keep moving the canards back and reshaping them and reshaping the wings. Maybe it'll work this time, uh, but my guess is it's still not good right now. Those canards are allowed quite a range of gimbling. <laughs> They're right now doing whatever they do. I don't lock them on launch or anything. We haven't actually separated from the launch clamps yet. I delay that as much as I do because it keeps trying to drop down. Even though if I launch it, it never drops down. Of course it has enough thrust. This thrust weight ratio is fine, but if I release the launch clamps with the KOS script any earlier than that, it still drops down, even though it reads enough thrust. I don't know why. It's only with KOS. And the thrust weight ratio is not that bad right now, it's just we've got lag. 1.55, hardly, you know, definitely not a worry. 
We could carry more fuel if we wanted to. Alright, we're past 10 kilometers, definitely past the speed of sound. And we're looking for something above 3,600 meters per second orbital velocity once we finish the first stage. Normally I would like 4,000. So, somewhere between 3,600 and 4,000. It really depends on the aerodynamics of the first stage, but we haven't gotten to the part where I have gotten to see how well it glides. So, yeah. I don't know uh, how much velocity it really, really needs, but it will be between 3,600 and 4,000. Maybe a little bit more than 4,000, potentially, if it really has bad ability to glide. Okay, still chugging along at 40 kilometers. Now at 1200 meters per second surface speed. Okay, the neutron first stages are off, or neutron boosters are off. Tilting in a little bit. I'll have to shift them somewhat in relation to the couplers, but for now it's okay. They're not bumping into each other or anything else. It was a manual switch off of their engines before decoupling. I'll have to verify that they have enough to actually get down safely. But first, we will want the first stage to be able to get down safely, so lots of work to do there. First stage only lasts a little bit longer than those. Part of the problem might be the tall fairing. If I use the shorter fairing, that might be a little bit better. But then again, my main issue has been that the center mass seems to be too far back. And the big fairing moves the center mass forward. Oh, I don't think it decoupled properly. Okay. The big fairing, uh, both pieces together is about 24.4 tons, by the way, if you're wondering. It's really, really tight there. Anyway, we want to... Oh, no, we do want to follow that. Oh, my mistake. Back over here. We are following the payload. I've been doing so many tests where I follow the first stage. Alright, and we are in orbit. Oh, no, I didn't want to reignite there. Uh, 249 by 202, and 225 meters per second left. So that's 150 tons of payload, which means that the dry mass of the stage, if you're wondering, is 65 tons. Uh, well, we do have some fuel left over, so uh, call it maybe 50 tons, and then 15 tons of fuel there. Propellant, I mean, and 150 tons of payload. Apparently Trappist-1 is behind Earth there somewhere. Anyway, so that's fine. That's enough margin, and I think we're good on that. Let's see about the first stage. Maybe my tweaks actually made it work. Let's find out. And we're off. Such lag. Jeez. Alright, the view at 2 kilometers in altitude with a little bit less lag than right when the clamps were released at least. One minute in, approaching 12 kilometers in altitude. For those wondering, I am launching from Tampico. It is my own custom terrain. Alright. Two minutes and 30 seconds. And uh, Neutron first stages slash boosters are off. I think they reserve about 15 to 16 seconds. Uh, or that amounts to about 10% of their total fuel. And that might actually be too much, I would have to see. But I think that's reasonably conservative. Considering it's a drone ship landing rather than return to launch site. Alright, we have the shutdown of the first stage. 
And it again failed to separate the second stage there. I'll do that. Really a little bit tight there, but okay. All right, now we can follow this. RCS on. We'll have to stabilize it again. It started rolling. Oh, not roll 30. Roll 0. Pitch 30. I changed the animation on the fairings so that they delay much longer before shutting. Just in case. Oh, then we need to not have the forward thrust of the RCS. That we can close. Right. Well, probably this is going to require way more work to get right. Especially since Spar's information wasn't helping. But let's see. Okay, down we go. There's Cuba. We would like to get further along than Cuba. Technically, we need to get up there, so this isn't the right trajectory, but right now we're dealing with survival more than actually getting to the right location. Uh, getting up there just means that we need to go maybe 78 degrees instead of 90, and we have the margin on the upper stage to deal with that part. It's already using half of our pitch down, which means its natural tendency is trying to pitch up. Maybe these aren't placed the best. But now we're maximum pitch down. Are you sure you're deflected right? I'm sure, I should have just left it be. Yeah, wanton destruction. It's amazing that the Kasei 1 rocket, as well as the Orion carrier plane, manage it as well as they do, but this might be this might be a bridge too far right now. I'll have to see. But yeah, that's just gonna take repeated tweaking and analysis and right now Right now it's not working. <laughs> but 150 tons to orbit, uh as long as we don't have to add more mass to this to make it work out we can do that. We still have the RCS propellant. Basically, the residuals that they force upon us once the stage runs out with the engines, it's currently 1.15% predicted residuals, so we left 1.15% in the tanks. That can be still used for RCS and that's what's happening, so that part we can do, but maybe the RCS is a little bit underpowered. Put a bunch of them. That's another possibility. Anyway, this is going to slam off the southern coast of Cuba. But that's how reusable Kasei 2 has been going. At least we can get a very good payload to orbit with it. And reusable except for the first stage. So we can deal with the reusability of the neutron boosters as well as the first stage. The second stage is not reusable. But, yeah. It's going to be tricky. So anyway, with that progress report, I'll say thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.